Hello and welcome to the Legend Sport Channel. I'm Joe. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at Out of the Park Baseball 23. Specifically, we'll be looking at the procedure I'm using to create my newest online league. This league will be a fictional historical league. I'm calling it Mythic League Baseball. To explain what I mean by fictional historical, for those who may not know, the fictional element comes into play in that the league, the teams, and the players are all fictional. The historical piece comes in that everything around the league itself is historical. So everything but the baseball league is historical, essentially. So we're going to say that everything that happened in real life between this, the formation of the league and today happened the same way. So there'll still be world wars, the Great Depression, um, you know, everything else that happened in, in history outside of baseball will still happen. And our baseball league will basically replace Major League Baseball and the minor league and so on. So that's it in a nutshell, okay? So here we have the start screen for the game. Our first step would normally be to click this new custom game. But, and then I'm going to do that in a second. But before I do, I just want to recommend that when you're going to create a league, particularly if you're going to create a league for online play, that you uh, make a plan because uh, ideally you're going to, let me just go full screen on this. Ideally you're going to want to have it be attractive to, to, to potential GMs. So um, once you've started, it's, it's, it's not impossible to fix issues or change things up, but it's easier if you just do it right the first time. So uh, plan, if you have you know buddies who might play in the league or who have a online league experience, feel free to, you know, reach out to those guys and seek help. Um, the more, the more input you can get, the better, in my opinion. Um, I have some guys that are in my current online league that I talk to about this idea that I'm having for this, this mythic league baseball. And they've, you know, offered me some ideas and some feedback on, you know, what they think works and what doesn't work and what might be interesting to try and so on. So we're doing that. So, um, you know, like I said, just plan it. Treat it like a real, like you would like a work project or something you're doing around your house. Make a plan and then kind of use that plan as a framework for, for building this thing. All right, so time to jump off the soapbox and let's get, uh, let's get underway here. So the first thing we're going to do is click this new custom game. And the first thing we see is this challenge mode box. So challenge mode, I won't go too deep into it. It's kind of a solo thing. Um, that puts you in a sp specific situation as a GM and lets you try to see if you can succeed in a certain way. So it's very cool, but um, again, it's for a solo experience. This is, you know, not what we're trying to do right here. We're building a custom, a custom fictional historical league that uh, ultimately will become an online league. So we're just going to click no thanks, which brings us to our league creation wizard. Now here. We have several options. You have the real world setup where you can build a real world league, um, a fictional, which is what we're doing, and then historical. Um, so you can go back and build, as it says, any league from 1871 to 2021. So 150 years of baseball history at your fingertips right there, which is really, really cool. Um, but we're not doing any of these. We're going to click the advanced mode button. And uh, somewhat ironically, we're going to end up back here at this screen and, and we end up clicking this fictional button first, but I'm going to show you um, advanced mode before I, before we do that. So we click advanced mode, we get to the create new new game screen. So this is you know the start of the nitty gritty as far as setting up your league. Okay, so uh, game name. Okay, so names are something that you, uh, it's not complicated, but just so you understand the way names work, uh, the name of the game is what your saved game folder and file are going to be named. So um, when you open up OTP and you go to load your, load your league, it's going to ask you or show you the league names that you have or the game names rather that you have. So whatever you name here is what your game is going to be called. So I'm calling my game Mythic League Baseball, right? Now uh, enter starting year and for a historical league or a fictional historical league like we're running, the, the year is important because it's going to help determine the rules of the game that are being played on the field, the way, um, you know, the game itself works as far as, you know, the, the way the game was played in 
you know, the 1880s is vastly different from the way the game's played today. Um, the, the basics are all the same, right? You, the, there's a pitcher and a hitter and, the, you know, all the positions and all that stuff is kind of the same. The bases are 90 feet apart. All that stuff's the same, but the strategies, the, the ball itself, you know, the way, the way the players approached batting, um, fielders weren't wearing gloves, you know, all kinds of things like that have a statistical impact. So essentially that's what it really is, is what the statistical impact is and what the strategies that were used in playing the game are. So, you know, there were errors where it was all about bunting and moving runners over and stealing bases, you know, uh, what they called inside baseball, which was around the turn of the century in the 1890s and the early part of the dead ball era. Um, and then you had, you know, Babe Ruth come along and show that, hey, if you hit home runs, then, you know, good way to score, to score. And it's kind of revolutionized the game. So what year you pick is important, at least in, in terms of what I am doing and what I'm showing you here. So I am I chose 1881. The wise. Um, essentially, it boils down to 1881 gives me 20 years in the 19th century before we get to the turn of the century. Uh, my ultimate plan here is to play the first 20 years of this league as kind of a solo project and then take it into an online league when we get to 1901. So that's the plan with this. Uh, my previous league, Figment League, I uh, started in 1876. I played through 1925, so I had 50 years of pre-play pre as a solo project, and we went online for the 1926 season. Uh, we are now in 1942. So we're 16, we're in our 17th season of uh, play as an online league. So Figment's been really successful, and I'm hoping Mythic can be that as well. Mythic will have slightly different rules, and I'll go into the rules and everything later on. But that's the reasoning for starting in 1881. Um, if you're familiar with baseball history, baseball actually started in 1871 professionally, financially started in 76, and so on. Um, I'm, I picked 1881 largely because it's a nice 20-year uh, distance from 1901. So uh, once we have our, our year and our game name, the next step is to click Add New League. Now this is going to actually bring us back to the wizard because that's what I'm going to select. You can also add a default league uh, or add a historical league. So if you wanted to pull in one specific league from history, you can do that, but I'm going to go back to the league creation wizard where we just were and hit, um, you can see advanced mode grayed out. We're actually in advanced mode, so it's a little cir it's circular here, but it, it, it works out, believe me. So we'll click fictional. Now we come to the, the wizard for the fictional league, which is has four steps. This is step one. So again, we have our um, real world templates, essentially, that we can use, right? So we can build a, a fake MLB, which is, you know, MLB with fake players, basically, um, current day. Same thing with the, the, the Nippon Professional Baseball League, the Japanese League, the KBO, and so on. All these, all these options are here for you, provided by the game. Um, and then you can also have a predefined structure that they give you a pretty good uh, list here. So you can have an MLB setup where you can also have fake teams and leagues. Uh, this will give you like the National League, American League, and all the teams. This would give you uh, basically random named teams that it pulls out of of the uh, the data the data files that actually populate all the naming and the cities and the the real world stuff around the league. Um, this 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 game has a lot of depth to it, a lot, um, which is kind of why I'm doing this video because. There are a lot of options, and you'll see as we go through the process, there are a lot of options to get you to the finish line of having a league that's you know complete and ready to play. You can do it real easy and fly through it and get something that's worthwhile, but if you want to craft it and make it your own, uh, there are a lot of options to that and a lot of, a lot of potential work involved in getting it done. So I'm going to choose one sub-league, one division, eight teams. Okay. Um, all these drop downs, you can see you can have multiple divisions. You can have uh, two sub leagues currently, but multiple divisions, and, and each of those divisions can have 50 teams. So you can make a really, really enormous baseball organization. Whether or not that's useful, um, 
And again, the more, you know, the bigger your baseball universe, the, the longer it's going to take to simulate days through your season. Uh, there's a lot of data processing that the game will have to do if you're talking, you know, an enormous organization. So we're going simple. It's 1881, uh, you know, very, things were, were, were not all that advanced. The train was the most advanced form of transportation. And there was a lot of horse-drawn uh, methods of moving around, you know, uh, very, very simple, um, kind of rustic life compared to the way things are today um, with our very technologically driven world we live in now. Uh, there wasn't much tech at all back in those days. So uh, eight teams in one league, no divisions. Um, it says one division. One division is essentially the same as having no divisions, right? It's just the league is its own division. Um, as far as the number of teams, if you went with an odd number, the game will let you do that. Uh, the challenge becomes scheduling, and you can build your own schedules as well. The game will get will give you some options, and you can kind of generate one on the fly. But it, it's a little bit uh, wonky because it kind of jams everything together. So... Uh, in, eight, in the 19th century, the sh schedule was shorter in terms of number of games, but the time frame of starting in, say, April and ending in October, that was in place. So you might have 70, 80 games in your season, but the season is still six months long. But if you use the, the built-in schedule generator inside the game, a lot of times it'll cram those 70 games together and they'll go from April to, like, July or something. So... Um, if you have a, an odd number of teams, you're going to have teams that aren't playing. And if you're playing three-game series and you have a seven-team league, six of the teams will be playing each other for over three games or you know three, maybe four days, and the other team is sitting around twiddling its thumb because it's not playing. So that's why I like to go with an even number of teams. There are things you can do. Um, there weren't so much of like series as we see them today. You know, Teams might play a couple, couple days in a row, but a lot of them were one-off. They'd play, play, play a game and they'd move on and do something else. They, they also played a lot of, you know, what we call exhibition games, barnstorming, where they'd play town ball teams and colleges and, and so on and uh, company teams and things like that just as a way to kind of raise some money. Um, so a lot of that went on. And then as things got a little bit more and more professional as time went on, all that stuff went away. And the season... They filled in all those quote-unquote off days with actual league scheduled games um, as, as baseball you know, grew as, a, as an industry, essentially. So we're going to go with, with you know, eight teams. Now, when I click Next Step, it's going to actually reach out and, and start accessing these data files that I referenced earlier. What those data files have is all the, as I said, all the world information. So... This is real world. I'm, I haven't customized this yet. So this is all the built-in stuff. So we're going we're gonna to have all the current countries with all their current cities. The population will be as of right now as opposed to 1880. There are ways you can customize that, and I'll show that later. I just wanted to kind of go through the basic process here so you can see you know, what to, how you can do this at a very basic level. So we hit next step. It's going to load everything up here. You can see it says, please wait. It's actually going to be pretty fast, but it's loading the names and so on. So here we are at step two. Now, it pulls in some random teams for you, uh, random cities with random nicknames. Uh, it gives you a fictional baseball league as your league name. And again, going back to the naming thing, our game name is Mythic League Baseball. But our league name is what we're actually going to see inside the game when you're looking at stats and so on. So news stories. So I'm going to call my league the American Alliance and have AA. Now inside our database, right, we have all these countries. The game helpfully gives you the top baseball countries up at the top so you can kind of quickly select the Dominican if you wanted the Dominican Republic or the U.S., Puerto Rico, whatever it may be. And then underneath that you have everything. So you could have a league in Armenia if you wanted to uh, very easily. And it will have all the cities and everything. And it, it's the, the database itself is really, really nice and, and really, really complete. So you can put, put teams pretty much anywhere. That's why I said this is a baseball sandbox that's incredibly flexible. Um, but for me, I'm just going U.S. because this is an 1881 league in the United States. Um, so that's, that's my choice. 
regions are optional so you can actually have regions you know asia far east you can have world this kind of impacts where the player pool comes from where your players are born basically before they come into the league um, i'm going to leave that off for now we'll talk about regions as well later on minor leagues i'm turning these all off because they don't really play into um, there was no affiliation for MLB at the time. There wasn't even an MLB. It was the National League. There was no affiliation between the National League and the what would become the minor leagues. They didn't consider themselves minor leagues at the time. They were just more regional baseball leagues. They were all professional leagues. And, and I'm sure in their mind, they saw themselves as being, you know, uh, similar to the National League. The National League, of course, says, well, we're the, we're the big boys. We're in the big cities. We're paying the big money, whatever. Um, you guys are uh, junior partners, essentially. Uh, they made an agreement, you know, to honor each other's contract and so forth because w without that, it was kind of chaotic. Uh, but the leagues didn't really work together all that well. There was player movement between them. They buy and sell players to each other. Uh, but it, there wasn't a working agreement like we have now where, you know, so-and-so is an affiliate of this, this major league team. That did not exist. So I will add major, uh, minor leagues rather later on, um, and I'll show you how to do that and make it be um, not really affiliated. I won't get into that right now. Like I said, I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll talk about that later. Um, at league level is major league. You can choose something else, independent, international. You can make school leagues um, and all the various uh, minor league levels as well. You can pull in historical teams if you wish. So you could build a you know all-time great league with you know however many of the greatest teams in your mind of his of history. You can pull them in, play them against each other, see how they do. Um, obviously, we're not doing that because this is a fictional league. I'm going to blank out division because I don't use it. Um, I, there is no division as far as I'm concerned. I use the same name here only because I want it to when when uh, new stories are generated and stuff. I want everything to kind of work out nicely, and you'll see. You know, American Alliance player of the month is so-and-so or whatever. So that, that way it just keeps it nice and neat. Now, the teams and the cities. All right, so this is obviously an important piece, right? Um, again, I look at the historical context, and I want cities that were um, big enough to support baseball teams, and <laughs> that's a pretty broad spectrum back in 1881 um, when you know baseball as an industry wasn't really set up yet. Uh, you can have, you could, and they did have cities like Troy, New York, that had a you know a National League team, um, which you know is a relatively small city, and um, I will have some of that as well. What I'm doing here, and you can do it, do this however you wish. What I'm doing is I'm going to make all my teams be on the uh, Atlantic seaboard, essentially either on or near the coast, and. The thinking here is that I'm leaving myself room to have a rival league rise in the Midwest. So all my all my initial stuff will be either on the Atlantic seaboard or in the you know the what we call the industrial Midwest area. So Chicago, St. Louis, Detroit, Cleveland, you know that kind of area, um, Pittsburgh, everything you know west of everything Pennsylvania and out to like the Mississippi River basically and. Uh, north of the Ohio River, uh, because that was a fairly largely populated area for for one thing. It's also a condensed geographical area, so travel is travel is easier, and it's just a, it's just how I'm going to set it up, right? And historically, the American League and the National League kind of covered both that area and the East Coast. I'm just kind of separating them out for now. Eventually, they're going to they'll they'll fight a little bit maybe, and then eventually they'll. They'll join together in an umbrella organization and we'll have, you know, kind of what we had historically with, you know, Major League Baseball from um, the Mississippi all the way out to the East Coast. Um, only because of travel considerations with train being the fastest, best way to travel distances. It took a week to go from New York to San Francisco. That's not practical for a baseball league. Um, same thing with, you know, the South. New Orleans was, you know, a, a decent haul from, you know, New York, say, or Boston or something like that. And that was really the only big city in the South at the time. Atlanta wasn't as big 
then as it is now. I mean, Atlanta's grown by leaps and bounds in you know recent years, but in the you know in the post Civil War era, it was was a big southern city, but in terms of the nation as a whole, it was not a particularly giant city. So um, that's my reasoning. And so the teams, I, the cities I chose were Albany, um, Baltimore. Help if I can type. Boston, Brooklyn, uh, New York, Philadelphia, Providence, and Washington. Now the nicknames. Nineteenth century nicknames were kind of uh, kind of a trip in a way. Uh, a lot of them came about because they these ball ball clubs were athletic clubs, right? They started as, you know, the Union Club of New York. So that became the New York Unions or the Athletic Club of Philadelphia became the Philadelphia Athletics and so on. Um, and then some were named by fans or whatever, you know, oh, the, they wear white socks, so they're the white stockings or, you know, um, their hats are red, so they're the red caps and so on and things like that. That's literally how those teams got nicknamed. Um, so, I wanted to kind of, for this, for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to keep it simple. I'm just going to call them all club. Um, and I'm going to go, I'll come back to this later because you can edit things. And I, I forget Baltimore all the time. So um, you make them all club and you put abbreviations. And you, I believe the limit for abbreviations is four letters. Um, and Again, you might end up like uh, with a you know a second New York team, and so that NY becomes NY one, NY two, or NYC and NYG or something, you know, depending on what your nickname is. Um, but initially, you start with this, and you can always change these things as you go on. So um, you can also, if I wanted to put a team in, say Montreal, I could have put Montreal in here and just change this to. Canada, and then that would have been, you know, that's that's how the easy way to set the nation for your team. So now that I have all of this, I'm ready to move on to our next step. So if I click next step, here's where you pick your league settings. All right, so league settings. Um, again, if you want to specify which real season is used as standard, right? This will determine financial settings, which is what I want. League strategy settings, also what I want, um, and player creation modifiers. So if if I mean, the text here is very helpful. If you select 1905, for example, the stats of your fictional league will be very similar to those of the real 1905 season. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I will come in here and I will go scroll all the way down and pick 1881. Then I'll set this to, to do that and automatically adjust your league strategy each year. So every year it's going to look at the, the, you know, the stats of that real season and kind of what your player ratings are. And figure out uh, through its algorithm how to, uh, you know, tweak the game engine to, to get you realistic results. Um, do we want an initial draft? I usually go with no, only because I, I I'm a control freak and I like to have control, so I might just build the rosters myself. So I always choose no. Uh, again, you can do do it if you wish. There's no harm in it, and then you can you know draft your team or let your GMs actually draft their own teams depending on how you're doing it. Schedule settings, right? So for now, um, for now, I, I'm, I'm just gonna change this to 70 and like two game series. For now, just again, I can tweak this before we actually play any games. This is just to kind of fill it in and it wouldn't even let me change the, the year for some reason. Um, tip, you know, typically this would be 1881. But again, I can fix this once we get in. Now, if I go next step, we're ready to actually create the league. And if I hit finish, it's going to go and it's going to generate the league. Um, so here's our here's our league, right? And did I maybe not change our? Anyway, I, I had to put that in. I might have screwed that up. I don't remember. But this is this is basically what you're going to see. And you click start game, and that's when you're going to add your manager or GM name as the commissioner and go through and. You know, finish set up. I'm going to actually stop here, and uh, we'll pick this up 
later uh, with a second video because there's a lot to go through. You know, this is this is creating the league, but there's a whole lot of stuff that comes after this before you can actually make your league live, at least, you know, in the way I do things. Um, you can, per you know, you can be perfectly fine clicking start game, entering your GM info, and just going and running with it because everything you need is here. This is the fairly straightforward, simple way of doing things. Um, I do a lot of tweaking, customizing, and so on, and I'm going to show that stuff if you're interested in seeing it. So, for now, I'm going to sign off. So, please like the video if you watched it this far and have enjoyed it and would like, you know, like to see things continue. Um, and in that vein, subscribe as well because, you know, if you subscribe, uh, not only does it help my channel, but it also will make sure that you get advised when a new video comes comes up and obviously the rest of this series will be coming along in the near future and then also spread the word please um, let other people know so they can check this out as well see if they get anything out of it um, you know I, I saw this as an opportunity with the new game and everything to kind of build a new league and show my process in building a new league so that people can watch it and see you know maybe glean something for their own projects or maybe they want to be a part of this or whatever it may be um, you know, just to kind of show how I do things and what this all means. So um, thanks for watching. Please uh, subscribe and like and spread the word. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. Uh, my name's Joe, and this is the Legend Sport Channel. Thanks for watching.